What's up guys? Chris back here to talk about failures in general. Engine failures, cylinder head failures, parts failures. Um, it seems to be a, a topic of chat all the time in this industry. And the one thing I think, you know, I wanted to kind of approach this from the manufacturer's perspective because the old way of the customer's always right doesn't really work out all the time in this industry. Um, we are all, Frankenstein, myself, all of us here, we care about our product, we care about our customers, we care about, you know, the, the, the end results. And one thing though that we won't do is just agree with things just because we're supposed to. Um, because, you know, maybe the customer feels one way and it might not necessarily be the right way. But, you know, again, I think if we can try to help educate or help give a different perspective from the manufacturer point of view. So anyways, what I did, <clears throat> so in the last, I don't know, let's say six months, we've had three or four, uh, let's say, what, what the internet and what some people want to say is a valve failure. Um, which, you know, in the, in obviously at the end of the day, what, am I a, a little guy standing inside the engine watching what failed? No. Is the customer that little guy or gal? No. So none of us have definitive proof, but the difference is, and I, I would hope that people can appreciate this, is, you know, I myself have done this for 25 years. Um, Frankenstein's been in business 17 years. Um, I have employees and, and our team that have been in this industry much longer than I, so I tend to, we see more carnage and failures than anybody with our own product because obviously we see it from everybody. And when a customer calls and says, or a, a shop calls and says, hey, you know, this, this thing failed, it's your fault. You know, obviously our initial reaction is, well, let's not place blame anywhere. Let's let's figure out what happened. You know, we don't care if it's a if it's a problem on our cylinder heads. We're going to stand behind it. And I can tell you, if you talk to our dealers, they're going to tell you we stand behind it when we know it's our problem. When it's not our problem, do we put up a fight? Yes, we put up a fight because uh, you know we don't do this for free. Um, we all have to survive and eat, and we want to have a thriving company and thriving customers and, and great product. So you know we're going to put up a little fight. So let's get down to it. Valve failures in, in general. So Frankenstein uses several different valve manufacturers. There's only several different valve manufacturers in the entire world for engine valves. Um, we use pretty much all the major companies, the same companies that all of our competitors use, uh, that some of the OEMs use. It, so these are very reputable companies. Um, and, and what I can tell you is, you know, we do thousands of sets of cylinder heads a year. And so failures will happen, but for it to be as simple as, for instance, this is a recent one. And, and some of these customers are going to probably recognize these heads. And by no means, these customers are, are great. We're, we're just using these as examples because they happen to be in the shop right now. So this happened to be a set of cylinder heads. Uh, it's, it's one of our M311 LS3 style heads. You know, the customer, uh, you know, like I said, there's always two sides to a story, you know, whether it had just dyno runs or it had a, a you know, a 330 hit on the drag shirt, whatever it is, there's a failure. They take it apart. All they see is a valve stuck in the intake port. Um, at the end of the day, valves don't just fail. And the common term that we hear around online and stuff and just in, in, in the industry is valve drop. Well, um, let me rephrase that. It didn't drop because the spring is still intact and intact. So what happened, more than likely in our experience and seeing failures like this, is the valve contacted something. Um, so this engine has some other you know, failure points that don't really relate to this. But at the end of the day, the valve, more than likely, 90%, I would say, did not just detach um, again because if that was a common problem you know in the thousands of heads that we ship a year we would have a lot more failures and so would all of our competitors so again you're not just summing up Frankenstein and the components we use because it's the same component manufacturers 
use amongst the industry. So again, this was a valve fail, uh, you know, as they call it, a valve failure. I don't know exactly what happened. In my experience, this had to contact something. The valve stem is still stuck inside the valve guide and the valve stem is bent. So that tells me, you know, of course, somebody online said, oh, well, of course it's bent and that I'm an idiot because I, I referred to the stem being bent. Um, and he says the valve came and hit it. Well, the valve can't touch the stem anymore um, if it's detached. The valve was more than likely bent, and when it shut, it popped, it ripped the, the valve head off. Um, or it simply impacted so many times with different parts of the combustion chamber that it, it then separated itself from the valve stem. So that's just one example. Let's get on to repairing. A lot of guys, uh, a lot of shops, some shops and ourselves alike, uh, have discontinued doing repairs. Reason being is by the time I take the time to, to remove everything out of this head, weld this head, replace the valve seats, make it like brand new, I'm gonna have more cost and more expense to the end customer doing that versus the customer just buying one new cylinder head. So uh, you're gonna see the reason why, you know, companies much larger than us, Brodick, so on, people that have done repairs for years. We've done repairs for 17 years and we just stopped because we can't charge enough. When we do charge enough to do it right, the customer is usually not happy. So ultimately, we're just we're no longer going to repair cylinder heads unless it's a very odd <clears throat> or rare case. You know, if it's a very custom set of heads that we did that only uh, Frankenstein can you know manipulate the, the, the repair. Um, so to clarify why we don't repair heads anymore, that's why the expense outweighs just buying a new head. And by the time you weld on this thing, as much welding as it needs, um, you know you can essentially change the integrity of the head. Um, not likely, but you could. So here's another customer, street driven car. Drove this car for a solid year, had a lot of fun with it, loved it, everything was great. The exhaust valve failed, as, as was put to us from the customer. Um, well, again, exhaust valves don't just fail. And now this is one valve manufacturer, this is a different valve manufacturer. Again, we use three or four different ones. So. For these common problems to be common is unlikely. Um, so just another example of the things that we, we deal with here is, again, we can't do any right because all the customer knows is, hey, I spent really good money to buy the best product, which they thankfully believed in fed for having the best product, and I enjoyed it, but then now it broke. Um, and sadly, you know, our take on that is, well, I'm a kid, so it ran for a year. It had a failure. These are no longer stock engine and engine components anymore. These aren't built to go 100,000 miles like people. The difference is the OEMs, they make a whole lot horse, a whole lot less power and their goal is reliability and, and endurance, right? So they're selling you a car that should go 100,000, 200,000 miles, no problem. Where these racing components, we're now doubling or tripling horsepower sometimes, or even if it's only a 50% gain, but it's still, a, a much different perspective and environment than an OEM engine. So you, it's just unfair for uh, customers or, or end, end consumers to say, oh, well, I bought the best, so it should be basically indestructible. Um, everything you know, can fail. It doesn't matter uh, what industry, everything has problems or fails. And ideally, you know, our goal is to find out why. It could take nothing, an over -rent. This was a standard shift car. So if you miss a shift, one time, this can happen. If you over rev the car, one time, this can happen. You know, it, it creates valve balance and instability into the valve train. So all those things play a factor. And again, you know, yes, if you have a stock car and you over rev it and bang out the rev limiter, does it fail? Not necessarily overnight, but it will eventually. We have tremendous amount of OEM L7 heads like this that failed because the valves did fail from other things, but this is not a factory valve. This is actually an Inconel exhaust valve, and this exhaust valve is not going to just separate and fail. Trying to argue with a customer or trying to educate them, essentially, we want to educate you guys. We want you guys to have the power of knowledge so that way, you know, your buddies or whoever wants to give you hell about, oh, look what happened. You can, you can battle that with knowledge and then say, well, look, I mean, this is, these are the facts. Um, because Frankenstein doesn't work off of the what ifs. Like all we can go off of is facts. And if we can't find factual information on failures, 
then at the end of the day, we usually want, we want to work with our customers. Are we going to just fix it for free and do all this? No, but we're going to work with you because at the end of the day, we want you to be happy. We want you to be proud to be part of the Frankenstein family. So we're not going to just leave you hanging. That brings me to the next topic which is kind of a, a, a two-part series. We're gonna get in, briefly, we're gonna to touch on dealers, okay? Again, the industry has been a lot of conflict with, well, what's the point of being a dealer for any company anymore because the companies are competing direct? Well, okay, so the whole goal of being a dealer, we're the manufacturer, we want retailers and, and wholesalers. So if you're a dealer of our product and you're going to make what you make on the percentage of that product, the expectation of a dealer is like you need to have customer support. That's why you're making the money. You're not making the product. You're not doing anything with the product. You're simply reselling a product, which we love and we greatly appreciate that. But we just wish that sometimes when there is an issue like these three, the dealers essentially ignored these customers because these three sets of cylinder heads were not purchased directly from Frankenstein. We love these dealers. They're fantastic. But sometimes when the dealer gets busy and the communication suffers, those end customers then go online and they bash Frankenstein because they feel like, well, Frankenstein's ignoring them and we're not giving them the help. And at the end of the day, we just want our dealers to know, like, we would really appreciate, um, you know, some support. Like, we support you guys. We take care of this stuff. No problem. Give us some love back. That's all we ask for. So, again, let's get on this dealer thing. The shop built the car. Installed the, the, you know, installed all the parts. They dyno it. Car ran great. Okay, um, a few few days, a week goes by, whatever it is. I don't know exact timelines. The car develops a little miss. The customer brings it back to the install shop. Install shop starts trying to look around and apparently tells the customer that the miss on the engine is due to the cylinder head being cracked. Okay. So we're like, oh shit, you know, the customer calls us. We're like, well, hey, you know, like we're here to help send the heads in. So we get the heads and sure enough, they are cracked, but they are not cracked in any kind of ports or anything. As you can see, a zoom in here, we have a crack along the intake flange. You can see this crack starts here, goes all the way down here, stops. Well, guess what? This head was dropped. And my guess is it was dropped before installation. So here's the next one that really gets you. This was also the other crack that they referred to. Okay, let me be clear. This is an install shop, guys. This is a shop, in my opinion, doesn't have any business working on anybody's car. Um, but I'm not gonna get involved in that because that's not, that's not my problem. But the end customer who wanted Frankenstein product is now being told by the install shop that your head, your, your motor is missing and leaking water in the cylinder because your head is cracked up here on the valve cover rail. Well, I'm sorry guys, but like, I mean, that's just wrong. Like somebody dropped the living hell out of this head. Like they must've took this thing and they were trying to like, see who could throw it the farthest because it's cracked on all, it's cracked on both front corners, like, it's, it's, it's banged up on the front edge here, front corner here. So when I say guys like, and this is me talking to our fed family of customers, you have to get down to the facts because this install shop was trying to throw the blame on Frankenstein cylinder heads leaking water. First of all, doesn't leak water up here. It's into the valve cover area, so it's oil. Second of all, most importantly, these heads were dropped before they were installed on this customer's car originally. So this poor customer, he just picked up a car. He didn't know, like you can't see any of these components, this part of the head, when it's all assembled with a manifold and all the wires and all the shit on top of your engine. So this is just a pure example of the industry, not the total industry, but these are the things that Frankenstein sees all the time. And so that's the reason why too, we get a little defensive sometimes on, on repair stuff because this, people mistreating things and, and, and taking advantage is a lot more common than people realize. To my, my fantastic dealers, we are here to support you, we are here to help. Um, but we, we gotta be notified to be able to help. So before situations get out of hand and customers wanna go on Facebook and blame this and blame that, that's their only 
voice. So it's your responsibility to, to fix it. Let's touch on the failures in general. Power levels. We're exceeding power levels dramatically over OEMs. So you cannot expect things to just run like a stock engine. Yes, are there cases that things run 100,000 miles? Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's our goal. Our goal is to give you something that is gonna, is essentially gonna outlive you, um, that you can hand down to your children or, or whatever, you know? Um, so we're not, we're not trying to deliver a, a, a bad product. We are doing everything we can to give you the best product for the price. Um, but again, just remember, even ProMod engines, even top fuel engines, damn lawnmower engines, all engines fail sometimes. Not inevitably, but you know, there's a high, high likelihood sometimes, especially when you're trying to push the limits. Because in today's world of street cars, a, a thousand horsepower is, a, is like, ha, cool, like, you know, Hey, I got a thousand horsepower, your neighbor's got a thousand horsepower, grandma's got 1200 horsepower. So like, you know, shit, like that's nothing in today's world of performance automotive. So keep in mind, if the car had 400, 500 horsepower from the factory, now you're making 1200, most of the time rear wheel horsepower, there is no, uh, there is no warranty in performance automotive aftermarket. So again, I, I, we, we try to build the best product possible, but there's no guarantees. So power levels in general are, are way above old times. You know, we're not with your, you know, 23 degree double hump heads and all that crap, like, you know. So the points I wanted to touch on was why we don't repair, because of the, the cost. I wanted to touch on the fact that we, like when a customer, we suggest, my suggestion is if you approach us with a failure or a problem, be open-minded. Because we have to be open-minded that our product failed. So at the same time coming in and you know f you and this and that and threatening this and that, it does not work with us. We're, we're not going to respond well if you're not going to be cooperative. So please be cooperative, be patient. Because when we get these things in, just to evaluate a, a damaged head, we're, we're we again we produce thousands of heads a year. Like so we have a production schedule, we have a production flow in this building. And so this stuff really throws a wrench in there. So it requires me and myself, no problem, but I'm the one who usually needs to look at damaged stuff because I've seen more carnage than most. And you know, just be patient and know that we greatly appreciate that. And we will do far more and help far more with somebody that is reasonable. Um, and so we, we thank you guys. When you become unreasonable, you make us basically shut down, you know, because we're like, okay, we're going to try to help this guy or, or a gal, or we're, we're trying to, we're trying to communicate professionally, but we're just not going to be told we're idiots and that it's all our fault and the world's over. So again, I, I hope this helped. We will do, if you guys want more videos on carnage, like we have tons of carnage that we see through the year. Um, you want to see real carnage. We can show you a top fuel head that, you know, I mean, those things come back in scrambles. I mean, we'll deliver a brand new set of billet heads and they come back a weekend later and it just tore up. So at the end of the day, don't always assume you know what failed. We will not assume that we know what failed and let's work together. You know, Frankenstein's here to help. So questions, anything you guys have, again, remember we're always here. Thank you guys.